Hello to you all. Um, this is our uh, session, our virtual college fair um, for the Potomac and Chesapeake Association for College Admission Counseling. We have six wonderful representatives here today. Um, Katie from McDaniel College, Morgan from Stevenson College, Marvin from Goucher College, Liam from Beloit College, Cora from IE University, and Bailey from Johns Hopkins University. So a few uh, um, housekeeping points. Uh, again, my name is Earl, I'm the facilitator uh, today. Um, <clears throat> housekeeping points for the audience watching this webinar, your camera and your microphone are off. Um, the way that you can communicate with our panelists is through the Q&A feature at the bottom or whatever your toolbar is located on your screen. Hit the Q&A. You can pose questions directly to a panelist or to the panelists as a whole. Um, there are other sessions um, to sign up for within the link that uh, uh, you registered for this particular session. And a recording of this session can be found at strivescan.com backslash PCACAC. All right. So um, <clears throat> just so folks know, we're down here at the bottom corner, session B4. Um, these are the presenters, uh, the colleges, and the order at which they will present. Okay. Stop sharing my screen. Um, uh, everybody but Katie can can turn off their um, turn off their video, um, and we'll see you in just a few. All right. So Katie from McDaniel College is off, and um, I am going to let her have her six minutes. And off you go. All right, thank you so much, Earl. Hi, everybody. Um, like Earl said, I'm Katie Ridgeway. I am an admissions counselor at McDaniel. Um, I know we only have six minutes, so I definitely wanna just dive straight into what there is to know about us. We are located in Westminster, Maryland, about an hour north of DC and 45 minutes north of Baltimore. Um, we are, uh, here's some fast facts about us here. Uh, so we were founded back in 1867 and have the distinction interestingly enough, of being the first co-ed college south of the Mason-Dixon line, which is pretty cool. Um, we are a small liberal arts school. Liberal arts is one of those terms that people say often and forget sometimes needs a little explanation. I know I went to McDaniel and I wasn't sure. I thought liberal arts meant arts and humanities. Just for your information, liberal arts is not about limitations on what you can and cannot study. It's about the philosophy behind your education. So at McDaniel, we think of that philosophy as being one of taking the idea of the way well-rounded student and translating you up into the well-rounded career-oriented professional. And what that means basically is we want to make sure you have the expertise in your major that you've chosen and the ability to move forward with that, but also that you have developed several other types of skill set while you're with us so that when you graduate, you're a master of your major who can do more than one thing. Um, this makes you more valuable as a, an employee because you can do more than one thing. It also gives you choice. You're not gonna leave McDaniel with this idea that you can only do this one very specific type of job for the rest of your life and that's it. Um, you might have a dream job in mind or a goal job you're working toward, but you're going to know that you have more than one skill set. You have the flexibility to slide into new roles um, and all of that good stuff. The world keeps changing. I know when I graduated in 2010, um, jobs like social media manager weren't even a thing. Uh, so that's just been a rapid development in the last 10 years. So we want to make sure you're ready for that. Um, we are small, as I said, we have about 1800 undergraduate students. Every year our incoming classes are somewhere between 450 and 550 students. Because of that size though, we are able to cap our class sizes at no more than 25 students. And an average class size is between 15 and 17 students. So you're definitely gonna have that small hands-on collaborative classroom environment. Um, even though we're small, we are 84% residential. So most of our students are living on campus from year to year. You will always have a place here with us if you wanna live on campus. Uh, we do guarantee your housing all four years. Um, and because of our size, we're able to keep that student faculty ratio low at 12 to one. So your professors are gonna have the ability and the capacity to interact with you one-on-one -on -one during class time, 
both as a student, but also maybe outside of class time as a whole human person as well. Um, so moving forward, uh, one other thing I do like to mention, we're part of a group called Colleges That Change Lives. I know we have one other Colleges That Change Lives school on this panel today. It's 45 Hidden Gems Small Liberal Arts Schools. There's a whole book called Colleges That Change Lives. So if you're interested in a smaller liberal arts school, definitely check it out. Um, some quick stats about McDaniel. Uh, we currently have students coming to us from over 32 states plus DC. We also have international students. It's been a big change over the last 10 years. When I was a student, I would have had to say 90% of our students were just coming from Maryland. And now they're coming from a little bit of everywhere. Um, we are also working very hard to increase diversity, equity, and inclusion on our campus. Uh, as of last school year, 37% of our students identif identified as students of color. At this point, with the new incoming freshman class, I'd say it's probably closer to 40%. Uh, we are also really keen on making sure that you graduate in four years. So you, you stay with us, you go through the plan, you get out of here in the time frame that you were anticipating. Um, so we actually have this campaign called Finishing Four. Uh, and because of the, the work of that campaign, we're able to keep our students here at McDaniel. 80% of our students stay after freshman year and move on through our system. Um, another cool thing about McDaniel is that all of your courses are going to be taught by the full professor who has 96% uh, of whom have the terminal degree in their field. Um, so you won't have a situation where you are in a class maybe that's being taught by a graduate assistant or the, another student. You'll always have that full professor. Um, and the last thing is that over half of our students each year participate in research and internships. We feel like hands on learning, getting actually active in your field is key to making sure you're successful. To that end, we have this promise that we make to our students. It's called the McDaniel Commitment, and it has these four components to it. But basically what the commitment is, it's our promise to you that you're going to get certain things as part of your time at McDaniel. Um, my place is all about making sure that you feel that you reach a comfort level on campus. You have a second home here, that you know where your spots are and, and who your people are. Um, so to assist with that, we actually do a summer orientation, the summer before you start. It's two days and one night where you actually come to campus and you get oriented to where things are on campus, where things are in Westminster, and you sit down with professors and other faculty who are going to help you pick out your first classes and kind of map your first semester so that you're not trying to do that on your own in front of a computer. Um, these other components on here are also important parts of the commitment. The one other that I'll talk about though is my design because that's something that happens during your first year. My design is a class that all first year students take between their first fall and first spring semester and that kind of mini semester in January. And my design is a class where you get to sit down with professors and other students and say, all right, you know, I made it through my first semester. I, I got my feet under me. Now let's make a roadmap for the next four years or next three years rather. We've got a list here of some of our majors and um, some of our specializations here at McDaniel. We have a little bit of everything, pretty even mix of the sciences and humanities, um, including some brand new majors. We just got off the ground in the last year or two. We're always listening to student feedback, want to make sure that we're keeping our majors relevant because the world keeps changing. Um, so quickly here also, we have 80 plus student led organizations and clubs on campus. We want you to have that good work life balance. We want you to be able to maintain that so that then you can indeed give your all to your academics because you're not, you know, you're, you're doing all right physically, emotionally, and mentally as well. Um, so most, even our most ambitious academic students are able to participate in a club or two while they're here with us on campus. We do have 24 D3 sports teams. We have Greek life. Um, and we also have I'm some have to cut you off. that are designed to assist. Um, it's about my time. It's, it is. Yep. Right. Yep. Well, thank so, you so much. And well, I'm gonna push just my time you, over to the next person. I'm going to have you throw your, um, just type in your contact information in the chat. Sure, sure, sure. Great. All right. Um, thank you for that. Um, Morgan is up next. Where is Morgan? There you are. Okay, so Morgan, I'm going to get you to, there you are, good, excellent. All right, Morgan, off you go. 
Perfect. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Morgan Belcher. I am an assistant director of admissions at Stevenson University in Owings Mills, Maryland. I'm going to try and get through as much content as I can here. As you saw, six minutes goes by incredibly quickly, so I'll try to fit in as much as I can. Stevenson University is a small private liberal arts university. We are located in Owings Mills, Maryland, as I just mentioned, which if you're not familiar is in North West Baltimore County, about 35 minutes outside of the city of Baltimore. So I won't go over all these fast facts. You're happy to kind of scan over them yourselves. But this just gives you a little bit of an idea of what our campus looks like um, from a people perspective. Um, the one thing to know is, again, we are a smaller university. We have about 2,700, 2,800 undergraduate students on our campus in total. This is the full list of all of our majors. So I'm going to spend a little bit of time here, of course. Um, our four most popular majors are nursing, biology, business administration, and criminal justice. Um, a lot of people who have heard of Stevenson, you know, from friends or online, a lot of us know us from our nursing program. We do have a wonderful four-year direct entry nursing program. So for those of you who are interested in nursing but may not be familiar with the difference between direct entry and non-direct entry, um, a lot of universities have programs where you may have to be a pre-nursing major for two years or one year, and then after a certain period of time, apply into their nursing school and hope that you get in. Gratefully at Stevenson, that is not the case. All you have to do is apply. Uh, when you apply to Stevenson for your freshman year, we'll let you know whether or not you've been admitted to the nursing program, as well as acceptance into the university on your acceptance letter. So you get a lot of information right off the bat here. But again, um, our three other popular majors, biology, business administration, and criminal justice, we have have a wonderful list of minors that's located on our website. So feel free to look at those. It's very similar to our major list with a couple of um, additions. And we have some pre-professional advising programs if you're interested in moving on to a health profession, kind of master's program, or um, law school, you are happy to pair any of those with um, any majors that we offer here at the university. All right, as far as our application process goes, our application is of course open. We're rolling admissions, meaning that we do not have any application deadlines. All of our deadlines have to do with scholarships. So I'll mention that in I think the next slide or the one after. Um, but in terms of applying to Stevenson, all you have to do is submit these required pieces here, your application, your official transcript that comes from your high school, as well as your essay and short response. Those are included on the application. Once we have those couple of things, it takes us about three to four weeks to get back to you with an admissions decision and you find out right there about if you're admitted into the university and into your major, as well as some scholarship information as well. We are test blind this year, meaning we are not looking at SAT or ACT scores for admission into the university or any type of aid, scholarships or financial aid or anything like that. Um, and we do have an optional letter of recommendation. You do not have to send that in. Um, just so you have this real quick, our average admitted student GPA is a 3.54 weighted. And this is a little bit of information about our scholarships. We do have one you're automatically considered for when you apply. It's this first one that you see on the screen. As you can see, there's no separate application. All you have to do is apply to Stevenson and you're automatically considered for a scholarship ranging from $10,000 a year to $21,000 a year, just based off of your academics. So definitely make sure you are you know, thinking about that when you're applying to Stevenson, you'll get a lot of scholarship information right off the bat if you do um, become admitted to the university. And then after that, you have a ton of other opportunities that you may be eligible to apply for. As you can see, they all have different GPA requirements. Maybe you have to major in a specific thing. There are a couple of um, scholarships we have where you do have to visit campus in order to be eligible. But depending on your, your GPA and kind of your time frame for when you're applying to colleges, we have a ton of merit-based scholarship opportunities. And of course, we do need base aid through the FAFSA as well. And 99% of our students do receive some form of aid. A combination of need-based and merit-based is, of course, the most common. If you are a screenshotter, if you're a picture taker, I would do a real quick control shift four if you're on your Mac um, and keep this page with you. Again, all of our important deadlines have to do with um, scholarships, not really application processes. So if you're someone who really is interested in applying to some of our scholarship programs or all of our scholarship programs, definitely keep this with you so that you can keep yourself on track. And of course, May 1, like most of um, our other uh, universities in attendance today is the last day that you have to um, declare that you are officially a Mustang. 
Last couple of things here, we are doing tons of on-campus visits right now. We do have a virtual campus tour, but we have three open houses on um, campus coming up. The first one is next Saturday, the 25th, and then we have one at the end of October and then one in December as well. So we would love to have you guys on campus. You can register for one of those at stevenson.edu slash visit. Um, you can register you, and I believe we're capping the, the guest limit at like one or two. So we'd love to have you and your family kind of tour around on campus, learn a little bit more about our academics, athletics, things of that nature. And of course, if you do have any questions, of course, I'll be here in the chat. Feel free to you know, use the Q&A feature to ask any now. Um, but of course, you can feel free to reach out to us through our email. Feel free to text our admissions office, call us directly. You can follow us on Instagram at, at future SU Mustangs. Uh, we do also feature accepted students kind of into the winter and the spring. So if you wanna get your you know, moment of fame, absolutely you know, send in a bio and you can be featured once you're accepted to Stevenson. Um, and I'm gonna also put my information directly in the chat as well. So if you guys ever have any questions, feel free to reach out to me through email um, and I would be happy to connect with you. But that's all I have. And I'm gonna turn it back over to Earl. Well, that's great. Thanks, Morgan. Um, all right, while, <clears throat> while Marvin from Goucher gets set up here, um, I do wanna say to our audience, uh, those who are listening on the other side, uh, please do hang on uh, at the very end um after john hopkins uh university presents um we will have a bit of a roundup and i've got uh, some closing remarks at the very end so please do hang tight to, um to the very end all right i see marvin's all ready to go um nope. do, are you on yep there there you go awesome marvin off you go all right, so hello everyone. My name is Marvin Barahona. Uh, I am an admissions counselor here at Goucher College, working specifically with students from the Virginia and Prince George's County areas. Um, so a little bit about, about Goucher College. We are a small private liberal arts college uh, in Baltimore, Maryland. We're technically in the, in the Towson city limits. So we're in the Northern part of Baltimore, uh, about five to 10 minutes away from the city limits, about 25 minutes away from the downtown area. Uh, we have all of these great hub cities around our area, about an hour away from Washington, DC hour and a half away from Philly, three and a half hours away from New York City, all of which are accessible by train, by bus, or by driving, if you're willing to make that drive. A little bit about our campus. Um, what's really great about campus is that you really do get the best of both worlds. Yes, we are in Baltimore, but our campus is very park-like. It is a very idyllic setting, especially in the fall when all the leaves turn great colors. Um, we are a fairly small campus, just over 280 acres, so from point to point, probably like a 15-minute walk. Uh, Towson's a really great accessible city. Five minutes away from our campus is a mall where a lot of our students end up working, especially during the holiday season. And um, as I said, the uptown area in Towson is a really great college network because we do have Towson University along with us, which is uh, a large state university in Maryland. So uh, a little bit more specifically about Goucher, as I said, we are a liberal arts institution. Uh, which really does mean different things for different uh, institutions. As uh, McDaniel explained, I like to say that our students will, will learn a variety of different skill sets in order to be a well-rounded individual. Um, and that's very much shown in academics. And I'll talk about that in a second. Uh, we are a small campus. Uh, we have just over 1,100 undergraduate students. So those students working towards their bachelor's degree. We do have a pretty great graduate program as well. So if you're interested in getting your master's degree, we do have 900 students currently doing that as well. Because we're such a small institution, we offer smaller class sizes. Student to faculty ratio is 10 to one. So for every 10 students, we have one faculty member on board. Small class sizes, class averages are about 12 to 15. I've never heard of a student being in a class of more than 30. So that's kind of like your high school average as if you go to a public school. Um, all of the classes that our students take fall under what's called the Goucher's Common Curriculum, which is our innovative approach to an education. So some of the classes that you'll take during your time with us include data analytics. So instead of taking calculus or statistics or, others, or another type of math, you will learn how to use, analyze, and interpret data. We'd also have a writing requirement of all of our majors. So even if you're an arts or computer science or biology major, you will still learn how to be a very great writer. So that's part of our writing requirement. Um, we have complex problem exploration courses, which are really great. We have first year seminar courses, which is like an introduction to a college classroom. So definitely lots of different kinds of classes to take outside of your major. And speaking of majors, we do have over 25 plus programs for our students to engage with during their time here. 
Our most popular major is psychology. Um, our second most popular is business management and third most popular is communication and media studies. But we have majors in all different types of disciplines. Uh, we have the sciences, we have the arts, we have humanities, Spanish and French as our major, as our um, language majors. And then we have a few standalone minor programs as well. So any major on that previous page can also be done as a minor. And then we have a few programs that are just minors. One of the great things about Goucher is that you don't have to know your major right off the bat. You do have until your second semester of sophomore year to declare a major. So you definitely have time to come in undecided as many of our students do. Um, great thing I wanna highlight here is our four plus one programs. These are great master's programs that we are um, partnered with Johns Hopkins and Loyola. Uh, right now, these are business programs, but you're interested, if you are interested in getting your master's degree, we are looking to increase our four plus one program offering. So definitely keep an eye out for that. A four plus one program is a program that allows you to get your master's degree in five years, four years of bachelor's degree, and one extra year at one of these institutions. So definitely a great time saver, money saver, and stress saver. Getting your master's degree is very stressful. One of our crown jewels is our study abroad program, as it is a requirement for students here at Goucher to grad, in order to graduate, you have to do a study abroad program. You can do a semester, you can do a short-term two to three week program, either way fulfills that requirement. Uh, we are slowly reintroducing study abroad, and uh, most uh, the most popular countries tend to be the United Kingdom and Australia because they speak English, but you don't have to know the language of the country you want to go to. You don't have to speak Dutch, you don't have to speak Russian or Korean, you will learn while you're over there. So we have all of these great partnerships, and again, we are slowly reintroducing study abroad. So yes, 100% study abroad as it is a requirement for students here at Goucher. Uh, a little bit about student life. Um, we are a residential campus, so we do expect students to live on campus for all four years. And we do have housing on campus for all four years, including dorms for your first and second year, and then uh, apartment and suite style livings for your junior and senior years. A great dining hall in Mary Fisher Dining Center, very great food. I ate there on Friday, and I can tell you it's, it's some of the best food that I've had. I never get tired of eating the dining hall. And over 60 plus clubs and organizations for you to get involved with, um, including athletics. We are division three sports. So if you are interested in playing a sport, we offer pretty much every sport except for American football and baseball. If you want to play sports, but not such a competitive level, we have hockey, uh, sorry, we have intramural and club sports, so you can play for fun. Uh, we have a weight room, cardio room, swimming pool, so we have all of the amenities that you would find at a typical university, which I think is great. Uh, a couple of things to keep in mind as we go through the application process. The Common App is the main way to apply. Two ways to apply through the Common App, early action, regular decision, either a non-binding, which means you're not committing to Goucher just by submitting an application. We are test optional, but it's important to note that we're not test blind. So if you do submit scores to us, we do have to take that into account. We're reading your application and it costs absolutely zero dollars to submit an application. So no application fee, which I think is great. Uh, last slide, every student who is admitted is automatically considered for a merit scholarship. This is a scholarship that we give you. You don't have to opt into it or apply extra. This is a scholarship that goes from 17,000 to $36,000 uh, for all four years. So you will get uh, $36,000 every year. You will keep it as long as you maintain a good academic um, standing with us, which is a 2.0. Uh, last little bit, we are open uh, for in-person visits, uh, daily visits. We have a couple weekends open and we are doing fly-in programs as well. So that's my time. Thank you everyone for uh, listening. All right, perfect. Thanks so much, Marvin. Um, up next is Liam from Beloit College. Um, there you are. Go ahead and start sharing your screen. Yep, we're good. And um, all right, Liam. Uh, off you go. All right, appreciate it. So uh, thank you all for joining us today. Uh, my name is Liam Daly. I'm an associate director uh, at Beloit College out in Wisconsin, and I work with students up and down the East Coast. So if uh, any of you were to apply to Beloit, I'd get to know you. Um, thanks for sharing a little bit of your Sunday with us. I want to shout out um, Katie for bringing up colleges that change lives. Uh, Beloit and Goucher are also colleges that change lives, and it's a really great group of schools. Um, they, you know, they do what they claim to do. They literally change lives. So if you're trying to figure out where to start your college search process, starting with that group of schools, uh, you, you can't really go wrong. Um, we'll start with where uh, Beloit is located. So we're located in the city of Beloit, Wisconsin, uh, which is in southern Wisconsin, right on the Illinois border. Uh, we're just about um, 45 minutes south of Madison, Wisconsin, Wisconsin, which is the capital for those of you who aren't familiar. And we're about an hour and a half west of Chicago. So if any of you were to come out and visit Beloit, uh, you could fly out of DC, out of Baltimore. Um, and it's just, you know, depending on the day, a two to four hour flight out to O'Hare, uh, just outside of Chicago. And then there's a, about an hour and a half coach bus that takes you right to downtown Beloit. And the uh, city is home to about 40,000 people. We have an international film festival, a minor league baseball team. Uh, we have an award-winning farmer's market, a uh, ton of good food. 
Um, probably what's most important is that we're just a five minute walk from campus in the downtown. So uh, we're not the kind of place you need to have a car to get around. We've got a pretty close relationship with the city. Uh, two of our academic buildings are located downtown, including our Center for Entrepreneurship. And uh, we have more than 200 local business partners where students uh, intern and have jobs and ultimately, you know, a lot of times stick around afterwards. Beloit, the college is a liberal arts college. We're home to just over 1,200 students. They come from all over the world, as you can see. Uh, they come from different geogra geographic, ethnic, religious, socioeconomic, uh, educational backgrounds. Um, but we're a community together of uh, students, faculty, and staff that's committed to being a welcoming and supportive place. And we're doing our best uh, to work towards becoming an anti-racist community as well. Uh, Beloit offers a forward-looking and flexible liberal arts curriculum. Uh, we encourage students to engage with real-world problems in small classes. Uh, Gotcha mentioned data science and data analytics. Uh, one of our new uh, majors is a data science program, and it's uh, put in a liberal arts context. Um, so students are not only expected to master the art of data analysis, um, they're also expected to do a double concentration in another area, like uh, political science, for instance, um, so they can understand the implications and the human consequences of the, the data they're looking at. A uh, third of our students double major and many combine a uh, major and a minor. So sometimes that's in complementary programs like international business and uh, Mandarin, or uh, other times it's surprising like pre-med and music performance. But we don't expect you to figure out what to do all on your own. Uh, our advanced mentoring program matches you in with an advisor within 72 hours of deposit. So for those of you who are seniors this year, if you applied early to Beloit and told us you were coming in December, you could meet your uh, faculty advisor at Beloit College before the winter holidays, which I think is kind of crazy. And you could spend the whole next six, eight months working with them to prepare to be successful once you show up on campus. Um, once you're on campus, AMP is there to walk you through your first two years. Uh, it includes small group advising sessions, workshops on important college skills. And one of the things that I think is the coolest is the AMP intro course. So one of the first semester courses you take at Beloit is gonna be offered by your advisor only to other first year students. Uh, and the course is set up to help you acclimate to college level academics, um, but it's not gonna be some boring course that's focused just on you know, time management or things like that. It's gonna be a class on a specific subject and you get to choose the one that you're most excited about. That's how you get matched with your advisor in the first place. So just a few of the examples from this year are uh, classes like alternative histories and the post fact world, uh, race and gender in early America and the Caribbean, uh, or chemistry and climate change. And we offer usually there are about 12 of those that you have to choose from every year. Uh, preparation for a successful life after college is woven into just about everything we do, both in and out of the classroom. Uh, and I think what's most important is it begins way before you've settled on a specific career path. So just one example of that is our uh, unique program called Career Channels. Our career channels bring together students, faculty, staff, and alums around shared passions. So. One, of that, uh, one example of that would be the health and healing channel, which brings together you know, biochem students on a pre-med track, of course, folks who wanna be doctors and nurses, um, but it also brings together uh, political science students who are interested in healthcare policy, uh, anthropology students interested in healthcare in different cultures, uh, athletic coaches interested in training in sports medicine, and you get them all together in, in the same room sharing ideas. So it's basically a roadmap for all of the ways your passions can be explored at Beloit and all the different possibilities for turning those passions into careers afterwards. Uh, Beloit students are curious, they're well-rounded, uh, very involved, um, and most importantly, friendly. Uh, it's not uncommon for a starter on the soccer team to also be an actor and be a member of student government and to host their own radio show. And I think your, your advisors here and your coaches, your supervisors, everyone at Beloit understands that this whole college experience is yours uh, and all of it is important and there should be space for you to do all of the things that matter to you. 30% uh, of our students participate in varsity athletics and way more in intramurals. Uh, we have 55 plus clubs. They range from an acapella group to a student run market research firm. Uh, and our student government has a real significant voting authority in, in the leadership of the college. So uh, if you wanna be, um, wanna have an impact, this is definitely a place where you can do that. I'll close up um, just by saying that uh, I hope the last uh, five or six minutes have convinced you that this is a place worth applying to. Um, we have no minimum GPA and no uh, requirement for SAT or uh, ACT scores and no application fee. So we're going to really try and get to know you as people um, and imagine the kind of impact that you're going to have on campus. We are looking for you to be kind, uh, curious, and want to have a positive impact in the world. 
So very much appreciate your time today. Uh, I'll put all, of course, all of my info in the chat and would love to get to know you more. Shoot me an email. Thank you. Great, Liam. Thanks. Thanks so much. Um, all right. Next up is Cora from IE University. There, I see her. Great. Awesome. Um, and your screen share is working. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Off you go. Great. Thank you so much. Hi, everyone. Good evening. My name is Cora Morrison, and I'm the Senior Manager for North America at IE University. I actually grew up in Maryland myself and lived in Spain for six years, and now I'm based out of our New York uh, International Office. Uh, we have more than 30 international offices worldwide, actually, so that we're able to attract the top talent globally. Um, and just to kind of share a little bit more about IE at a glance, uh, we are an international European university located in Madrid and Segovia, Spain. We're a medium sized private nonprofit university. All programs are taught in English, which I feel like is usually the next question that people ask. Um, and 75% of the students are international students. So usually about 10% of the students are coming from the US each year. Uh, there's over 120 different nationalities on campus and a little over 4,000 undergraduate students right now. 55% um, of our students uh, are women and our career focused majors uh, really have an experiential approach and then it combines things like internships, international exchanges, which I'll share a little bit more about in just a moment. Um, I'd love to share a little bit also more about our two Segov our Segovia and Madrid campus. Starting off looking at our Segovia campus, it's our uh, very historic, smaller kind of campus community experience. Segovia is a smaller city located about an hour and a half drive or 25 minutes outside of Madrid by, uh, you know, if you go 25 minutes by high speed train or an hour and a half, you're going to be there in Segovia. This is our campus from above. Actually, the building is a historic UNESCO protected building. It was started in 1218, which is very impressive. Uh, if I think about the history and you know the beautiful architecture there. Um, and our students in Segovia are, are definitely, you know, very international. Um, there's a lot of different activities for students to participate in. We have media labs, we have design and architecture labs there as well. And the city of Segovia is really a beautiful and unique experience because you have the Roman aqueducts, you have, uh, you know, very beautiful cathedral and also a castle to explore. Um, and then in contrast, our Madrid campus, this is more of the urban environment experience, okay? Because you walk out of campus and you're in the middle of everything. We just uh, actually opened our new tower um, because we, we moved all of our undergraduate students from our old Madrid campus into the new tower this September. And so, um, you know, it's 35 story tower. It has a lot of great spaces for students and classrooms. Um, it's also, I don't know if anyone here has ever been to Madrid, but it's where the four skyscrapers are in Madrid. There's only four. And uh, we've just opened up the tower right there with them. So it's a really beautiful and different experience for a student who's looking for that more urban environment. All programs end up in Madrid. So you can start off two years in Segovia and then do two years in Madrid, or you can do all of your studies in Madrid for most of our programs. And then this is just a little bit of an overview of the different spaces of the tower. I won't go into all of them, but we have all of this also on our website. Um, and then to jump into our studies, as I kind of mentioned before, our studies are career focused. Um, all of our programs are taught in English and they're all fully accredited degrees with the Spanish Ministry of Education and throughout Europe. So that means that students who attend IE are able to then go back and if they want to go back to the US, I know students who study master degrees, they get great jobs in the US and they continue on professional in their careers. Um, and then for our bachelors, there's single degrees here that you can see on the screen. They're four years long and uh, the intake start date is in September. Students apply directly to their uh, Bachelor of Study and learn through an approach which combines theory with practical learning. Um, so most students take part in internships and international exchanges throughout their studies. Classes are usually no more than about 60 students in our most popular program, which would be business administration. And even in those uh, classes, all students are usually broken down into smaller work groups throughout the semester. Um, we also have exciting program partnerships such as with Northwestern University and King's College London for Law. For example, students can complete three years at IE to get their LLB and then go on to Northwestern University for two years to get their JD if they'd like. Um, our Bachelor in Business Administration, I kind of mentioned, is one of our most popular programs and we also offer some different dual degree options there uh, with China University Hong Kong and Peking University in China. You can also focus if you want in finance and entrepreneurship or in technology. 
Some other really interesting programs might be our international relations program, which was recently redesigned with the United Nations System Staff College, and it really offers a lot of great opportunities to our students, such as mentoring, to collaborate um, with the UN partners for different capstone projects, and much more. We also offer several dual degrees. So this would combine you know, the two programs in five years and students would graduate with two separate degrees. Um, and they're challenging but very rewarding ways to specialize in two different but convergent focus areas of study. And just to quickly mention our pre-college activities, if there's anyone here um, who maybe is interested in summer and winter programs, challenges and competitions, I'd be happy to share more later, but we do have different activities where students can come um, you know, also attend classes, meet students from all over the world, and experience the international environment. At IE, I kind of like to think of this as, you know, we are career focused and students go directly into their major of study, but you can also build your own path while you're here. So uh, we offer various electives and advanced seminars. We also have a lot of international exchanges, a lot of internship opportunities, even many of these end up being international internships and our labs. So we offer over 160 different international uh, partner universities for exchange. Um, and so, you know, and I see my time is, is coming up here. So I'll just kind of end with this. Um, but, you know, we have universities, for example, College Park in Maryland. Uh, and I guess I will pass it along to the next uh, presenter and I'll put my information in the chat. Thank you. All right, thanks, Cora. Great. Um, last but not least is Bailey. She's from Johns Hopkins University. And um, there's your screen share. And I think you are ready to go. Yes, thank you so much. I made sure to get my timer up and running. Hello, everyone. My name is Bailey Jacklin. I'm a senior assistant director at Johns Hopkins University. Looking forward to being a, a part of your program today. We want to give you in this little crash course in six minutes an overview of our institutional identity both within and beyond the classroom and where you can learn more. We are the nation's very first research institution, the first to move beyond uh, simply identifying problems but seeking out their answers and sharing that it broadly with all outside of the institution in fulfillment with our mission knowledge for the world. We combine a liberal arts well rounded interdisciplinary experience with hands on experiences diversity of thought and a tight knit civic engaged civically engaged undergraduate community to really take knowledge to the next level. At Hopkins, we have an open curriculum that allows our students to really explore across those major disciplines that you see popping up on your screen here in ways that are interesting and unique to them. Even as you are learning what your interests are, you are able to dive into those classes you know that you want to take and explore within and beyond them as well. Studying diverse courses makes you smarter, allows you to see connections across different disciplines, and with over 51 majors and 49 minors, there are certainly plenty to go around, and as you can see, the majority of our students will do more than a major. We, of course, do not leave you to navigate this on your own. We are a medium-sized institution of 5,300 undergraduate students, and our student-to-faculty ratio is seven to one. So there is a lot of opportunity for you to make lasting connections with faculty, staff, and your peers at our mid-sized institution. We are successful in that pursuit and sharing of knowledge because we go beyond a diverse curriculum and really dive into diversity of thought. And that comes down to who we have in our classrooms. That means a balanced academic community across engineering, humanities, social behavioral sciences, and natural sciences. It means diversity within those programs as well and access to research. We have students who come from all 50 states, 80 different countries lending their own unique perspectives, different walks of life, different cultural backgrounds. Learning from others who think differently than you do and have different life experiences makes you smarter. It drives towards more creative and more effective solutions, and it really leads to higher levels of human advancement. One of the ways that we intentionally build in this community as an institution is through our financial aid policies. We aim to bring in the best and brightest students from around the world, regardless of their family's ability to pay. And we do this by having need blind admissions policies for domestic students, which means that uh, financial aid and admissions are happening separately. And for all students, we meet 100% of demonstrated financial need, meaning that through a review of your financial aid documents, we see what you and your family can provide for your education and whatever difference there is between that and the cost of attendance, 
we cover through funding, as the screen suggests, that does not contain loans. We're fortunate to have grant-only financial aid packages so that students can graduate from Hopkins debt-free. It means they can dive into these experiences. You'll see on your screen research and internships across the different disciplines, engaging in student life. We have over 400 student-led organizations. We're a place for students to build their leadership skills, not just in our campus of Baltimore, but in and around the Baltimore City area as well. We're an urban institution, which means that within the reach of our undergraduate students are opportunities for internships, research, civic engagement, growing alongside Baltimore City community leaders in the service of our shared home. And through the culmination of all these different experiences, our students are learning to be adaptable. They're learning to be critical thinkers. They're learning to be highly collaborative. And no matter what their career goals are, those are transferable skills. And as you see on the screen, our students have a lot of options available, available to them after their undergraduate experience. One of the institutions, or rather one of the offices that is really critical in helping them see through all these options is our Life Design Lab. Formerly known as our Career Center, our Life Design Lab works with students from the moment that they are on campus to begin to see how their favorite classes connect to their on-campus involvement, which connects to their study abroad experience, those moments of inspiration and help them find internship experiences, help them find career paths that bring out the best of all of those different interests. To take it to how we identify students in our process, to have this engaged and diverse community that all the way comes back to our holistic admissions review. We consider our students as individuals in their own unique context, and we want to see through your academic character how you've developed your own intellectual curiosities, taken advantage of experiences that you've had access to. Impact an initiative. How have you left a lasting impact in your community or explored your interests outside of academics? That's how we get to those 400 student-led organizations. And finally, your overall match for the institution. Do we see you as collaborative? Do we see you as intellectually curious? Do we see you as a change maker that is really going to join this community and take advantage of all that we have to offer? We have three timelines for first year admission, early decision one, early decision two, and regular decision. Early decision one and two are both binding admissions agreements with the only difference being the deadline. So if you know Hopkins is your number one choice, it's a great option for those students. The financial aid philosophy is the same and the limited merit-based scholarship that we offer where no additional application is required is the same across early and regular decision. If you'd like to compare offers, we do offer a regular decision admissions round as well. Thank you so much for your time. All right, perfect. Thank you, Bailey. Um, I'm gonna invite all of our panelists back on the screen here. Um, Literally, literally have about two minutes left. Um, and I'm going to pose my one closing question and then we'll sign off from there. So um, as, uh, as we wrap things up here, what is, and we will answer in order of presentation. Um, so answer in order of presentation. What is the one thing about your college or university that you want our audience to remember? What is the one thing about your college or university that you want our audience to remember? So Katie, you're up first. Sure. Um, so I think I'm gonna say something that I didn't get to cover because of the, the fast nature of six minutes. Um, so one thing that I do want families and students to remember is that at McDaniel, one of the promises we make to our students is that every student is gonna have a minimum of two hands-on learning experiences while they're with us, whether those are internships, research opportunities, study abroad, any, any area in which you're kind of getting real world experience, getting your hands dirty in your field. Perfect, excellent. Uh, Morgan. 30 seconds or less, the one thing. Love it. So I just want to plug really quickly um, our student success coaches. Um, students, and it's kind of unique in that we have student success coaches that are like academic advisors that just work with our freshmen. So they give you a little bit more of that hands on, one on one guidance through until your sophomore year. And then we also do have an internship requirement for our students. So they help you with that as well. Good. Marvin. All right. So, um, one of the biggest things about Goucher is that we are really a globally minded um, university. It's not just because of our study abroad, although that's a big part of it. Um, the classes that you take, the people that you meet on campus, our faculty members, all of them are, are really globally minded and they want to open your eyes to the world. So I would say that 
you're interested in any sort of global education or even just wanting to explore the world through the eyes of Baltimore, I'd definitely check out that. Liam. Sure. So one, one of the things I sort of dropped off in the admissions section was just making a plug that we're uh, super committed to financial accessibility for students from just about every socioeconomic background. So um, our current average is that we meet at least 96% of the demonstrated need of students. We're hoping to get that up to 100 in the near future, but we feel pretty good about 96. 35% um, uh, of our students are Pell eligible. Um, and we uh, automatically consider every applicant for merit scholarships that range up to $36,000 per year. Cora. Sure. Um, so also in the six minutes, I didn't kind of get to just application process. So very quickly, I'll just mention that we do have rolling admissions and we're looking for a well-rounded student. We have a more of a holistic approach and we are on the Common App. Daily. We are part of the vast Johns Hopkins University network. We spend more federal funding for research than any other institution and the access to those different research centers, their faculty and the opportunities are within the reach of our 5,300 undergraduate students. Excellent. Thank you everyone for that. Um, I wanna thank those who joined us for this particular webinar. When you close out of the webinar, you will get a quick five question survey that we have asked our participants to fill out for us and complete. Again, just a plug for more sessions, you can sign up for those. And then the recording, again, will be available at strivescan.com backslash PCACAC. All right, folks, we're just going to wave goodbye to you all, and I'm going to hit the log off. Thanks for joining us. Happy Sunday. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.